Mark Munoz here at the C3 here yeah. at uh, Calvary Chapel. Mark, where do you yeah. live from here, man? I live about 15 to 20 miles south of here um, in Mission Viejo. Okay, so Mission yeah. Viejo, and your yeah. son is here, and he's going to be a junior, right? Yeah, he's going to be a junior. He's going to be a junior. He started, he started on and off when he was 10 years old, but um, was probably wrestling one day a week because he was playing soccer and baseball. So um, he just decided to concentrate on wrestling in the eighth grade, and um, you know he's 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 here now, you know, and he's he's wrestled quite a bit since then. Um, he's wrestled. Uh, Freak show and cadet world team trials. Um, in, in Akron, he's going to Akron and Russell's yeah, there. Akron. So you got him traveling. Yeah, I got him traveling. He's, uh, you know, I told him I said, um, in order to wrestle, in, in order to wrestle on the lead level, you got to wrestle the best guys and see where you're at and measure yourself. And and um, if you want to be the best guy, then we got to wrestle the best guys. So so we travel. We even travel around here. I mean, we travel to seek out who the best guys are and. We travel and we wrestle, you know, and so um, we drive out to, you know, sometimes two and a half, three hours away to, to get a good workout in, you know, so, so that's what we're doing. You know, you're NCAA champ for Oklahoma State. Yeah. You know, you're, you, you, fought in multi, you fought in multiple leagues, right? No, and I just... It was all, all, all UFC? It was all UFC, but... So you uh, never had to go and, and play the contract game. No, I that's never. That's nice, did. right? Yeah, it's nice. So, it's so nice. when you're able to stick with one organization, but basically you're a professional athlete from... Yeah. 1996, you know, yeah. when you go to Oklahoma State and you, yeah. you're on scholarship, yeah. to a couple years ago, yeah. right? So you're, yeah. it's almost 20 years you're a professional athlete. Yeah, yeah. How does your body feel, you know, and, and, and as a dad now, the most yeah. important thing that there is yeah. for guys like us, That's right. what's it like to not push your son to, maybe you're, you have some aches and pains now, yeah. but what's that like and how do you guide your son from yeah. your personal experience? Yeah. So. Um, being involved in wrestling since I was 13 years old and and um, getting into the UFC and you know you know being being done with the sport for about a year and a half two years my body is is I put a lot of miles on it <laughs> you know and um, having that experience I, I actually coach my son in that um, being able to listen to your body and not just push through all your all your pains and aches um, because that's what I did when I was younger you know I was like uh, it just it just hurts a little bit, but I'm okay. I'm gonna push through it. But uh, but now that I'm almost 40 and and uh, I'm feeling a lot of a lot of aches and pains, you know. And so uh, for me, that's um, you know I'm taking the wisdom that I've that I've attained through the years and I'm applying it to my son. Now I never I never pushed him to wrestling ever. Um, I invite him out to some practices every now and then, and he wrestled probably one day a week since he was 10 years old and. Um, he was really good in soccer and baseball, and so um, he got drafted to a national baseball team. Uh, I believe he batted like he batted uh, nine for twelve, and uh, I, I don't think he made it. He made a single error on third base, and um, I believe he had like uh, ten RBIs or something like that. And um, he uh, comes back and wrestles the freak show and goes 0-2. You know. <laughs> Um, so you go from being an elite level baseball player to yeah. a, a, an average wrestler. Yeah, he's an average wrestler, not not even average. I mean, he goes to the freak show and wrestles uh, varsity and, and goes 0-2. I don't believe he scored a single point. Then he um, went from there to the National Cup and his soccer team, and their team took fourth place. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's amazing. You know, and then, and then um, he comes back, he goes, Dad, I want to quit soccer and baseball, and I want to wrestle. I go... Why in the world do you want to wrestle? You're so good at the other sports. You don't have to pick now. And he goes, well, I love wrestling and I want to wrestle. I go, okay, if you want to wrestle, then we got to train with the best guys. We got to wrestle four or five days a week. Uh, he committed to that. We went back to the freak show. He had uh, over a hundred kids in his bracket. And he ends up winning it. Really? Yeah, he wins the freak show the very Where next Where he was 0-2? Where he was 0-2. That's incredible. Um, so, so just that experience alone, I told him, I said, but, you don't deserve anything on this earth. You know, if you have a sense of entitlement, you're not gonna go anywhere. You gotta earn everything. Just because just because you come from a great background with your with your dad um, being being good in wrestling, like that's not gonna give you anything. You gotta earn it. You gotta make your own name. You gotta go out there and do it. And so that's what he did. He committed to that, he wrestled, 
um, the best guys uh, was practicing four or five days a week um, and he's making some big gains you know and so uh, this year being a junior I think he's gonna um, you know we'll see what happens you know I, I told him regardless of what happens I'm your dad I love you regardless of whether you win the state or not I'm gonna love you the same if not even more you know because because you went out there and you and you put your heart out there you know so um, so yeah I love being his dad um, sometimes I don't like being his coach you know but <laughs> But, you know, I got to let him know. I got to let him know how, you know, how champions are built, how, how you need to get to that elite level um, because I do have that wisdom. But I have to separate them. I can't, be, I can't be dad and coach at the same time. It's impossible. You know, I have to, I have to turn off the switch sometimes. How do you do it? It's, it's tough, you know, because, you know, I got I to gotta love on him. Just like a, just like a coach would coach his, his, his wrestlers, He's got to love on him, but at the same time, he's got to have some tough, some tough love, you know. Um, he can't bail him out of things. He can't say, oh, it's okay. You didn't run today, but, you know, you need to get in shape. No, <laughs> you don't do that. You know, you, you, you do separate it. You, um, for me, like, I'm a dad, and I tell him what he needs to do, but at the same time, I shut that off, and I say, hey, bud, let's go out and let's go have some lunch, spend some time. You know, we don't talk about wrestling. You know, we talk about other things. You know, we we go out, and he loves he loves to uh, go out, and he loves to go to the beach, hang out at the beach. He he loves food, <laughs> so just just like me, <laughs> I've been cutting weight all my life. But uh, but yeah, I mean, he's you know, we talk about other things. You know, and and um, uh, to be able to separate those two two things are very hard. They're very hard, but at the same time, it's needed. You know, you got to be intentional. With, with how you do that because if you're not intentional then you might you might be uh, you, you, your conversation might might drift back to wrestling you know so being intentional meaning you have to plan your conversation before you even go you know like what are we gonna talk about how am I gonna how am I gonna address you know things you know how am I gonna talk to him about his relationships how am I gonna talk about school or you know other things that are not wrestling you know so um, that's that's kind of uh, uh, what I've learned through the years, you know. Like, I'm not gonna force him to wrestle. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, um, you know, force him to be this this champion. You know, he's gonna want it for himself. If he wants it for himself, then I'm gonna back him up 100%. You know, but if he doesn't want it, then I can't force him to like it. I can't force him to love it. You know, he's gotta. He's got to do it on his own. So you look at, you know, speaking of you know, tough love, being a dad, yeah. and mentorship, you, you wrestled under John Smith. I did. And I'm on Oklahoma State Overload, by the way. <laughs> I, listen, here's yeah. who I've filmed lately. Yeah. Coleman, Scott's Technique. Yep. I've had uh, Daringer. Yeah. I've had J.O., Jordan Oliver. Yep. And then I had John, like, two and a half weeks ago in Indiana. That's that awesome. I'm on I'm on overload. Yeah. Jamil yesterday. Yeah. Right? Yep. And I got you in front of me now. So here's, yeah. I guess, here's the question. Yeah. Why are they such amazing technicians would be my first question for you. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm guessing uh -huh. you are too yeah. in looking at it. Why are yeah. Oklahoma State guys such amazing technicians? And what have you taken from John Smith value-wise and applied to fatherhood yeah. and life now? So yeah. why are you guys amazing technicians first off? <clears throat> I believe, I mean, because the class that I came from, um, I mean, you got Teague Moore who's coaching over at uh, American. You have uh, Jamil coaching over at Stanford. You have... Um, you have uh, oh Jeff Reagan, who is an All-American his fifth year. Um, he's coaching at the Citadel. Um, you have Kevin Ward, who's over at Army. You have um, you know I'm missing others, but there's countless others that that are great coaches. Now, uh, John, Coach John Smith, he he looks for technical kids because he's technical himself. Um, when I was coming out of high school. I was a big guy, 189-pounder, shooting low single legs, high crotches and single legs, pass by snap downs. You know, I was throwing inside, I was doing inside trips, all in all in high school already. So I think he he liked that. He even he he even commented on that. You know, how I was a technician on the mat, and so uh, I believe that's who he recruits. Now, having said that, um, we we can't be awesome technicians and teach 
the technique um, just coming out of high school. We got to be able to be mentored. And that's what he does. He, he mentors us in the way of wrestling camps. When wrestling camps come, he forces us to teach um, and, and break down techniques so that kids can understand. Um, and, uh, and, that's, and that's what we were around the whole time. You know, when we were, I remember sitting when I was a freshman coming in, we had to come in earlier so we can learn the Oklahoma State way, the cowboy way. You know, and and that's how we were going to uh, be developed was uh, cowboy wrestling style. You know, to be cowboy tough, the mentality, the perspective, the technique. That's all the stuff we needed to learn. Um, and uh, he was going to string us along that way. And uh, I learned <clears throat> I learned a tremendous amount from him. Um, you know how to be tough. You know how to how to train hard to to uh, to be able to get what you what you want. You know, from the sport, um, how to how to um, to be able to um, uh, uh, push yourself technically so that you could so that you could actually hit the technique that you learn on the mat. Because a lot of kids or a lot of wrestlers learn something, but they never apply it to their to their style. They never apply it to to what they do on the mat. So um, I developed a lot in college over John, over Coach John. He's He's an unbelievable technician. He's developed tremendously as a coach when I got there. And um, now, I mean, his, his success as a coach speaks for itself. You know, Oklahoma State's a dynasty and it'll continue to be a dynasty when he, you know, if he's the coach. Um, I don't know how much longer he has, but, uh, but I, I love him as, I love him as like, he's, he's family. You know, he's, uh, you know, he comes out and um, he, he calls me, he texts me, and he asks me how's my family, and um, that's the type of guy he is. You know, he's he's really family oriented, and um, you know, it's I couldn't have asked for a better a better place to go out of high school. Um, it was tough my first years there, but but you know everything's tough in the beginning. You know, you can't have you know everything that's worthwhile is going to be tough. You know, and so for me it was definitely worthwhile. I had a lot, of, a lot of life lessons there. I met my wife there, raised my, raised my family there, and moved here to California. So, um, so yeah, I love my time there. Looking at like what he is, you know, you were there when Joe was born, Jojo, I, little Joe, I not was. not little Jojo anymore. No, but I he was, was born when you were there on the team. Yes, well, you know, and you saw him yeah. raise his kids. He's got five kids. Yep. He's got three boys. Yep. Um, how have you taken some of those principles and applied it to your family life? Yeah. So. Um, I remember when um, Jojo was coming in the room, big blue eye, white haired. I mean, his hair was like white. It wasn't blonde, it was just white. And he had a rice bowl haircut just running around the wrestling room. And from there, I was thinking, okay, you know, he's doing that. I'm, you know, when I have a son, I, I want him to just kind of be in the wrestling room, you know, wrestling with him. I saw him wrestling with Jojo, and, um, you know, and Isabel was in there too. and. You know, all his kids were, were inside the wrestling room and, and it was just a part of their life, you know, and so, and that's how I applied that. You know, I I made sure I, I brought Trey to the room, but I never, never forced them to get on the mat, you know. All of a sudden he's like, Dad, can I get some wrestling shoes? I'm like, yeah, for sure, let's get some wrestling shoes. So get your kids around it, you immerse them in it, and then they're going to want to, they might yeah. want to do it. Yeah. More likely they'll want to do it. Well, you got to have all positive experiences. So every time I every time I came home, I wrestled with them. You know, I rolled around with them. And then um, when the NC2As were on, I put it on. I'm like, hey, bud, look, he shot a double leg. You can shoot a double leg. I mean, this is when they're young. You know, this is when they're six or seven or eight years old. You know, and, and uh, you know, I would always have positive experiences with wrestling with him. And... Um, you know, all of a sudden he's like, Dad, can I go to practice? I'm like, for sure. I had my club then. I'm like, come on out. And he'd wrestle one day a week and then go to baseball, then go to soccer. And and uh, probably if that. I mean, he, he probably never. I mean, there's some weeks that a span where there's two or three weeks that he didn't come to practice. But but he still had all positive experiences with wrestling. And, and I believe that's why he wanted to wrestle. 